at the European Women Payment uh, Network. I'm talking to Catherine Wynes, and she's the co-founder of World Remit. And remittance is for me always a very mysterious thing uh, as an industry. But first, let's talk about why are you here at this uh, Women um, at this European Women Payment uh, Network. Well, I attend quite a few events because I, you know, I believe it's very important for, for women to network, to kind of help women, you know, build that confidence which is needed to, to, to rise, uh, you know, in, 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 in the industry. And especially payments and financial services have always been a, a difficult sector for women. You know, it was very much... Uh, Why is that? Why is it so difficult for women? Well, because, you know, it was very much a, a male environment and uh, finances has always been, you know, seen as a as a male environment so it was very difficult for women to break into uh, the glass ceiling so I think you know for me especially as a, a bit of an older woman it's very important for me to help other women and, and to share my experience and you know to help you know I do a lot of mentoring as well mm -hmm. and uh, so I tend I tend to in, uh, you know attend many of those events either in the UK or uh, around the world to, to, to help and, and it's needed it's needed uh, and do you think it's getting better I mean because you've been in this payment world for a long time is it getting better or uh well it, uh, it's, it's it's getting better in some areas but it's not uh, it's not as good as it should be i'm still kind of uh, sad when i hear stories especially from younger women who you know are kind of seen or treated quite badly by you know maybe male investors and i'm kind of saying well you know I, i've suffered that 40 years ago and it's still the same. So it's, it's you know. So a lot of change and a lot has not changed. That's it. Yes, there's still a lot of a preconception and things. You know, it's, it's, it's people's attitude that we need to change. Yeah. So let's talk about your company, World Remit. And eight years ago you started. First is remittance business. Uh, transfer money from anywhere to anywhere. How big is that business? Uh, it's, a, it's a very big business. You know, there's 250 million migrants uh, around the world, and uh, they send around probably, uh, you know, according to the World Bank, about 600 billion dollars a year back to their family to support their family. So, you know, for for support, for simple support, yeah. food, but also education, school yeah, fees. For some countries, it's the second biggest export product, uh, or yeah, the, the yeah, first yeah. even. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of country accounts for 10 percent of their GDP, so it's very important. It's huge, yeah. yeah. And uh, what percentage? Do uh, these people have to pay to transfer the money? What is the what has been the in the, in the last uh, ten years? What has been the? It has changed uh, a lot because of uh, you know companies like us who have come into uh, you know the, to compete. It was a, a sector which was very traditional and dominated by two or three players. Therefore, there was a bit of a monopoly and no encouragement to to improve things. Yeah, what are the top three players? So, so Western Union, MoneyGram, are yeah, the, the the top uh, three players. How much did they charge? Uh, you know, before they used to charge well over 10 percent, you know, 10 to 20 percent. Now, because there's been a, a move towards reducing that, they're more like seven to nine percent. So, uh, so it's gone down. But company like us, why we set up the company was to to bring it into the the 21st century first, because we are digital. So on the send side, we is digital only. We don't take cash. But so our mission was really to use technology to be able to reduce cost. So we we didn't need to have shops. You could go to our app or our website and also we could use technology to, to deal with some of the regulatory environment so you know banks have got ten thousands of uh, of people who deal with compliance we've got a much smaller team because we use technology yeah, but i mean you still you you're you're having about one million uh, one percent market share so you do yeah. about six billion yeah. of transfer a year and how many people are in your company? Uh, we, we are about 700 people, yeah. That's a huge amount to transfer or, uh, f f you know, this kind of, uh, this kind of money. What, what are your rates? Uh, what, what do you have to rate? We, we tend to be between 4 and 5%, 3 to 5%. Yeah, yes, that's depending. still necessary, right? And why is it so expensive well, to transfer money? I mean, it should well, be... I'll, I'll take you through the process. First, we have to have a, a license. We have to apply for a license. So in a lot of countries? In all the countries where you send money from, you have to apply for a license. So... For the moment in Europe, it's quite easy. You can passport, you can take yeah. one license, but in the state, it's one per state. No! To apply, it took us three years to get 50 licenses. Yes. In most countries, it can take up to two years to get a license. We are applying for a license in South Africa. Not only it's taken two years, but they're also forcing us to use, we use cloud technology 
they don't like cloud technology, we have to have a physical server in South Africa. These are the costs which you know add to kind of developing the business. So that's that. You need also to develop a, a, a network of partners in the many countries. So to terminate the money. That takes a long time. Because people want cash in those countries? In a lot of countries, people still want cash because that's the only way that they can receive money. What percentage in the remittance is cash uh, termination? Oh, it's still probably up to 90%, yes. Okay. Uh, but where we have uh, again innovated that were remit was to uh, to identify new technologies. And in Africa, for example, uh, the, the, the concept of mobile wallet, mobile money was created in Africa, in yeah. Kenya. And we thought, well, you know, if people are using that on a day-to-day -day for their domestic transfer, why can't they receive money directly into their mobile money? It will be cheaper, yeah. be easier, it be safer. And that's what we've done. And uh, World Remit is currently one of the leaders in terms of international remittance to mobile money. Okay. Mm -hmm. So really, uh, it's very simple to transfer money back and forth, but it's extremely difficult to be regulated and to be compliant. Yeah, that's exactly, and it's all you know. It's it's behind the scene, and people. That's what people don't understand and don't see. And I say when you, I tell people that I need 50 licenses in the U.S., they look at me, in, you know, and they, they they don't believe me, and they say, "How can it be?" And but that's that's the way it is. And if you want to have, uh, if you want to terminate money, for example, in Kenya, what do you need to do for that? We we need to have licensed partners. So we work with banks, with uh, financial institutions which are licensed, and that's again that's why you know it's important so you've got to be able and especially when you're very small at the beginning yeah. that was difficult sometimes to tie up with those partners because they were looking at you and say well you who the hell are you, you exactly and uh, fortunately because i'd been in the industry they knew me personally uh, so that helped a bit but uh, certainly that that's a challenge and that's why is there's still a very high barrier to entry in in this sector yeah so why you were a founder together with your partner uh, what was his Ismail, name ismail ahmed yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, why did you why did you take the opportunity to start this uh, remittance company? Well, you know, we both been in the sector and both you know, thought there was something to be done because uh, uh, you know I'd been in the previous company and I. I could see that uh, there was nothing else we were offering the customers compared to other uh, players. And I had, at the time, thought about uh, online, and uh, certainly Ismail was the same. And, you know, we were introduced by a common friend of, uh, of ours, and, uh, you know, he put the idea to me, and I, I thought I believed in it, and I, uh, and I thought that was the right time as well to, to, to do it. Yeah, uh, so how do you now go for the next five years from 1% to 10% of the market? Well, I think it's, uh, it's, it's obviously, I first, I think the, you know, more and more people have uh, one of those. Yes. So uh, people feel, you know, more and more uh, adept to kind of use a uh, mobile to kind of do uh, some uh, transaction. So that, that makes a change. And it's also for us to kind of work with people. So, our, for example, our marketing approach is slightly different now. At, be at the beginning, we were using, you know, early adopters would come whatever, you know, yeah. online. So now we do a lot more face-to-face, -face, you know, kind of to encourage people to, to educate. It's, it's a bit, a uh, lot about education. Where, where does the education need to be happening? In the developed countries and the people who send the money or the well, people receive both we do both because you know on the send side this is to make people more comfortable but also on the receive side if people know that there's an easier way to receive money they will tell their sender and say well i don't want to collect cash can you send it on my mobile it's much easier Hey, uh, you have been uh, you've been uh, as a woman uh, been a leader in the financial industry what what needs to be done to make it much better? What, what do you think? Well, if the three things c which could be done, does it have to be done with legislation, with education, or role models? What are the examples which need? It's, 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 there's not one solution. It's a bit of everything. You know, I think it's interesting in the UK, for example, we had the pay gender gap report. Uh, the companies had to report on the pay gender, which I think is a very good initiative. You had to report. Yeah, uh, the difference between what an awareness. Uh, what what happened? Yeah, that 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 and uh, that meant that company had to start looking at themselves and say oh god we are paying men more you know f uh, it's not for the same job but generally you can see we, we recruit more senior men and not so many senior women and therefore there's a gap so that the type of thing helps but also women have got a big job to do as well themselves you know we have to support ourselves and help yeah, and branding like, personal branding uh, uh, that's it you know a conference like this to come promote but also to give confidence to women that they can do it and you know i think women have got uh, and you know from women like 
like me who has you know, quite a lot of experience is, yeah. is to give back. Yeah, mentoring is really mentoring important. It's very, very important, yes, yeah. extremely. Well, thanks for uh, innovating this uh, remittance business and thank you very much for uh, coming to the network. It's, it's really it's nice to be a guest of the, uh, yeah, the European yeah. Women uh, Payment yeah. Network and yeah. uh, I'm going to try out your service because yeah. I think it's really see how, uh, how innovative yeah. it is. The first transaction is free of charge. Great. <laughs>